Okay, I think we're live, or not live, but rolling. Hello. Now this is quite a tricky video to do today. It's a complex, it's a complex topic. Uh, if you remember, if anyone remembers or, or knows, the, the subtitle of my YouTube channel is the ex exploration and reorientation towards being. Uh, you know, it's it, it, this has been a huge uh, concern. Of a, of a lot of my videos and it's not just because of this respiratory illness thing that's occurred in the last few years uh, and other aspects like the, the climate scam so to speak it has there are, there are, there are it, it's connected with this idea of good and evil as well It's permeating, not just in the last three years, but it's been decades, hundreds, thousands of years in relation to the attack on being. And so I'll just, you know, it's 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 a very t tricky, tricky topic. But uh, the best thing to start is with this, this quote from the Bible. This is from Colossians 2, chapter 8 to 10. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And of course, uh, in Ephesians, it talks about guarding yourself against the devil, principalities and powers. That's other, other, other principalities and powers that are against you. So he's talking about the good here, and in Ephesians but guarding, this, guarding oneself against the evil and uh, and the reason I bring this up is the idea of vain philosophy or deceit vain deceit we're living in an age and this is a thing I've touched on so many times in my videos the idea of technology or or the age of technocracy now Technology is not just gadgets, electronic devices. They certainly are technology. But it's also seeing human life ideologically, philosophically, as a technology, as a techni in the Greek sense of the word. For example, you have primary school children in Scotland, for example, being taught to view their mind as a machine, a cognitive machine, to analyse the gamut of their emotions, their sadnesses, their anxieties, their uh, depressions, their fear, their shyness, their, sol their, their solitary nature, if they have one, if they're like that. To view all these things as problematics to be analysed within the cognitive framework and uh, to see interhuman in discourse, intercourse as merely uh, bits of information passed between one and, one and another person. And this is shown very clearly in the sex education uh, the what I would call the polymorphous per perversity of the deconstruction of heteronormativity the deconstruction of the family 
of uh, he heteronormative sexuality towards a, a sex as a hobby, as merely certain things you can do with your body to get pleasure, and that is like a, a kind of lifestyle existence that should be uh, chosen, that should be celebrated, that should be um, pushed. All towards what? Well, as I'll, as I'll go into discuss in a minute, it, dis it destroys this technological way of looking at human being and life. It destroys what someone like Martin Buber w uh, would discuss. Martin Buber was a Jewish, German Jewish philosopher who had a lot to say on religion, philosophy, psychotherapy. And uh, in, in this little book here, there's a, there's a, a very quite a lengthy chapter on what's called, what's called dialogue. And he was very concerned with the, the, the what I'm talking about, the te technological advances, uh, the way of the way of destroying humanness, and he, so he says on uh, on page 31 of this book, uh, he says, "What do we expect when we are in despair, and yet go to a man? Surely a presence." by means of which we are told that never left, nevertheless there is meaning. And uh, some people might think, well, that's, that's, what is that, what's all that about? Well, what, well, especially from a psychotherapeutic perspective, from human being dealing with another human being, what does one expect? Well, of course, in the psychotherapeutic context, Many people now, nowadays are inculcated to see going to another human being for their problems and suffering as purely a transfer of information required. But being human, human being, is far more than a, a trans, transfer of information. That's a technological way of looking at it. One is expecting something more profound. But when you live in a society where God has been killed and a technocracy or a technological way of looking at the world has been inculcated, well then that's how all that's how you will see a human relationship. A relationship. It's not really a relationship then. And uh, he goes on, Booper. Now where is this? He talks about uh, three kinds of uh, dialogue. There, there is genuine dialogue, no matter whether spoken or silent, for each of the participants really has in mind the other or others in their present and particular being and turns to them with the intention of establishing a level, living mutual relation between himself and them. There is technical dialogue, which is prompted solely by the need of objective understanding. And there is monologue dis disguised as dialogue in which two or more men meeting in space speak each with himself in strangely torturous and circuitous ways and yet imagine they have escaped the torment of being thrown back on their own resources. The first kind, as I have said, has become rare. Where it arises, in no matter how and spiritual a form, witness it Witness is born on behalf of the continuance of the organic substance of the human spirit. The second belongs to the inalienable, sterling quality of modern existence. That's the technological dialogue. But real dialogue is here con continually hidden in all kinds of odd corners and occasionally in an unseemly way, breaks surface surprisingly and inopportunely, certainly still, still oftener is arrogantly tolerated than downright scandalising, as in the tone of a railway guard's voice, in the glance of an old newspaper vendor, in the smile of a chimney sweeper, and the third, a debate in which the thoughts are not expressed, 
in the way in which they existed in the mind but in the speaking and, uh, and are so pointed that they may strike home in the sharpest way and moreover without the men that are spoken to being regarded in any way present as persons. A conversation characterised by the need neither to communicate something nor learn something nor influence someone nor to come into connection with someone but solely by the desire to have one's own self-reliance confirmed by making the impression that is made. I'll stop there at that point. But, you know, regarding um, Colossians chapter 2, chapter 8, about vain philosophy and deceit and technology and technocracy, the, uh, uh, in the last three years there's been a, a very huge uh, reliance on a technological way of seeing the world through virus transmissions, so-called virus transmission, uh, and biosecurity, and uh, stopping people meeting, social distancing, wearing a mask, isolation, uh, a rise in the idea of transhumanism, the rise in the idea of home working, the rise in the idea of uh, uh, the metaverse. These, all these things that I've just mentioned are rooted in vain philosophy, technology, technocracy, biosecurity, which, uh, as the CIA, way back, decades ago, when they found out how to break prisoners through these technological tools of social isolation, through masking, through through social distancing, human beings break down. But the prisoners they were dealing with, the, the interrogation, they break down. I, so look at all the, the, these benign technological advances, phones. You see, see people in pubs. They don't really uh, speak. They share information. What they're looking at on their phone. It is very, very concerning. Uh, and Buber goes on, and he says it's quite a chilling, chilling little little quote here. Uh, nor is dialogic to be identified with love. I know no one in any time who has succeeding in loving every man he met. Even Jesus obviously loved, loved up sinners, only the loose, lovable sinners, sinners against the law, not those who were settled and loyal to their inheritance and sinned against him and his message. Yet to the latter, as to the former, he stood in direct relation. Dialogic is not to be identified with love. I suppose he means a romanticised, kind of soppy, uh, virtue signalling kind of idea of Hollywood love. But love without dialogic, without real outgoing to the other, reaching to the other, and accompanying, accompanying with the other, the love remaining with itself. This is called Lucifer. So in other words, if you're not, if you're relating to someone on a technological basis, in the interhuman, in between, between, when you're pre being presencing and co-presencing, presencing with another human being, if uh, there's no uh, no real letting the other be contra technological way of being with them then that is not true dialogue and it's not true love I mean you can love someone but, but that's a tricky tricky idea because you can love someone cause, because you want to control them because you want them for your vanity, to use them as an idol. So, so it's to say someone, I love you, it, it, it's 
it's it's loaded. It could be a loaded term, you see. Uh, and he goes on later on. He says reflection, reflection, R E F L E X I O N, is something different from egoism and even from egotism. It is not that a man is concerned with himself, considers himself, fingers himself, enjoys, idolizes, and beno be bemoans himself. All that can be added, but it is not integral to reflection. Similarly, to turning towards the other, completing it, there can be added the realising of the other in his particular existence, even the encompassing of him so that the situations common to him and one and oneself are experienced also from his, the other's end. I term it reflection when a man withdraws from accepting with his essential being another person in his particularity, a particularity which is by no means to be circumscribed by the circle of his own self, and through it substantially touches and moves his soul in no way imminent in it, and lets the other exist as his own experience, only as a part of himself. For then dialogue becomes a fiction, the mysterious intercourse between two human worlds only a game, and in the rejection of real life, confronting him, the essence of all reality, begins to disintegrate. So here he's talking about uh, a kind of this, what I'm on about this technological way of dealing with each other. The dialogue becomes a fiction, a mysterious intercourse between two human people, which becomes a game and a rejection of real life. Uh, and reality begins to disintegrate. It's quite a satanic, dreadful, dark, uh, you know, we, we, it's very easy to not pay attention to it. But when you're sitting in a group of people or, or you see people in a pub or a social situation and they're relating on the basis of these screens that they have with them or on the basis of believing technological science, advice about how to interact with each other by covering their mouths, by standing two metres away. All this influences a, a, a reality of creating a fiction. Uh, so you think of the, the, you know, the rise of the online world, social media, the rise of the... the, the uh, the, 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 the desire for 20 minute neighbourhoods and for working online for even socialising online to see the mind as a computer when it comes to one's emotions to see uh, sexual the world sexual world is purely a a transfer a, 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 a a transfer of, 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 of getting pleasure. One person can come along, you want X amount of pleasure, doing it in X amount of ways, uh, teaching kids what all the different ways are. It's technology being integrated and inculcated to, 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 every, to every aspect of our lives. Vain philosophy and being, de being deceived. Va the, the, as he says, beware any, any man lest spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Because it's people that invent technological advances, so called advances, the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So there's something quite mysterious about a true meeting between another human being. And of course, the last three years they've tried to attack that. There was no accident that bars were shut down, cafes shut down. They didn't want people speaking about this terrible thing that had happened, this, this, this supposed need for lockdown. As recent Scottish reports have come through for the Scottish Cobb Inquiry, lockdown wasn't needed. 
Oh dear. But but the damage has been done, you see. And uh, it's a screamly satanic thing. If you look at it from a, from a religious perspective, this attack on human being, what it is to be human, this in, uh, this this uh, mass of technological way of thinking and living our lives in a technological way through this vain, vain philosophy. And the discussions about it are very vain, even on the the people on on suppose the other side. They talk to each other in a technological way, being sucked into this godlessness. And uh, so, just to end, this is a uh, from. Uh, St. Augustine from his book The City of God uh, but just, a, just a quote from the Psalms 146 chap, uh, verse 78 The Lord looseth the, looseth the prisoners the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down So St. Augustine says in The City of God The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's from John 1, 14. By his very birth, he made an eye salve to purify the inward eyes of our heart, thus enabling us to behold his glory through his lowliness. This is why the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He healed our eyesight. What comes next? And we beheld his glory, John 1, 14. No more mortal human can behold his glory unless first healed through the lowliness of his flesh. Why is it that we couldn't see? Think about this, my beloved friends, and understand what I say. Dust on earth had blown into the human eye, so to speak. This had damaged the eye so that it couldn't see the light. That damaged eye is now anointed. It was damaged by by the earth, and the earth of Christ's flesh is applied to it to heal it. All eye salves and medicines are taken from the earth. You are blinded by dust. By the dust of Christ's flesh you are healed. Flesh damaged you. Flesh heals you. The soul had become earthly minded by surrendering to the evil desires of the flesh. Thus the heart's eye was blinded. But the word became flesh. The true doctor fashioned an eye salve for you. So he came in flesh to eradicate the evils of the flesh and through death to execute a death sentence on death. Just as the word became flesh, so now you are able to say, and we beheld his glory. What sort of glory is this? The glory of a human, born of a human. That was his lowliness, not his glory. But what is the vision bestowed on human sight when it is made through made made well through his flesh we beheld his glory the glory of the one the, 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 of the only begotten from the father full of grace and truth so the earthly ways the vain desire, vain science the vain philosophies takes us away from something quite profound technology can be a very positive thing but it's a double-edged sword. If it takes away or it dominates one's being, it takes away this something essential of being that uh, that, that is essential to being a, 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 you know alive. And and I'm not and I'm not allowed to talk attack this way. Is a uh, however subtle it is and it is often subtle it's quite a satanic uh, attack on us all but you know as I said it's a very very tricky topic and uh, you know listen back to this video and the references of Colossians uh, 
and uh, the, the readings from Boober there uh, and St Augustine and, and as people like Boober and, and other religious people would say you've got to let these these ideas digest within you for something to emerge and that's what, optim what psychotherapy is about is to let something emerge rather than some someone person A saying to someone B some information there's something profoundly mysterious takes place it's something opens up beyond the technological uh, and this is why Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10 are very important passages for outlining this in, 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 in the ideas of St. Augustine to remind us to uh, inspire us to uh, realise the, the real damage from this technocracy and technological way of seeing our, our very essence is not at all healthy if that's what they want to destroy that is what they want to, to, to take out of our children in the schools they don't want they want to shut down this I'm going to end there and uh, hopefully uh, Hopefully I've uh, been able to share something, you can get something out of it. I don't know how successful I have been. Uh, but I've just been reading this Martin Buber stuff for the last few days and it, I felt moved to just make a little video about it. Uh, and that's often how I make my videos, just if something inspires me and I have to just write a few notes down because uh, it moves me when I read these words so over and out take care, bye bye the now